In the previous lesson, we looked at the use memo hook, which allows us to memorize values so that those values are not computed all the time if they do not need to be computed. Well, we also have another function exposed from React known as memo. And memo works slightly similar with the use memo hook. But what exactly is the memo function? In this lesson, we'll be learning about the memo function and we'll also be seeing how we can use the memo function and the use memo hook together. So what exactly is the memo function? The memo function in React allows you to skip Keep re-rendering of a component when the props of that component hasn't changed. So it's still going to apply the concept of memoization. It memoizes that component and would only re-render that component when the props of the component changes. And let's see how that applies to this example that I have here. So I've done a few modifications to our project so far. Like always, you can check the video description to find the code that I'm using in every lesson. So here I created a new component called memo example. This component receives some props, of course. And let's just assume that this component does a lot of computation. So you don't want to be rendering this component all the time if you do not have to. This may be the case in a real world application, but let's just assume that for this example. So we get the show heading and show pricing cards from the props. Actually, I can even get this from the props here show heading, show pricing cards instead of having to create this line separately. Then I keep a color state here and and I use our randomize our function, which we have created in previous lesson. We have this console log here, which is going to log rendered show heading and the show heading value, show pricing cards and the show pricing cards value. I'll show you why we need this later on. And then we return a div. And in this div, we set the background color for the div to be the current color state. And then we have this first paragraph where if the show heading is true, we have the heading is displayed just as you can see here. And if the show heading is not true, we have the heading is not displayed. We do the same thing for show pricing cards. The pricing cards are displayed or the pricing cards are not displayed. And then we have this button, which when you click the button, it's going to update the color state with another random color. And we have simple styles here. I can even close this file. Now, if you go to app.gsx, we import memo example and we use the memo example component here and we pass the show pricing cards prop and the show heading prop. So now if you click on update states, if you remember update states, States. Let's go to the button. If we click on update states, it calls this function update states. And if we go to that function, this is going to update the state of show pricing cards to be the negated value. So if the show pricing card state is true, it's going to update show pricing cards to false. Same thing for show heading and same thing for this show use effect component. Now let me open the console here. Coming from this place here. We have our rendered show heading is currently true. Show pricing card is currently true. Now, when you click on this button update states, you can see that this component is rendered again. The memo example component is rendered again. We now have show heading false and show pricing cards false. Now, why is the memo example component rendered again? Well, as we have understood from state so far, when you update the state of a component, it's going to run everything in that function again. So it's going to create this function again. It's going to create this object again and also here here, it's going to render all of this again. Now, in the process of rendering all of this again, it means it's going to render memo example again. That is why we have rendered here again. But you click on update state again, the state of the app component updates and every children component of the app components, including memo example, including all of these divs, including also this pricing cards. Let me remove that. Including also this pricing card components, this use effect examples component, all of this would be rendered again because they are children of the app component. Now, this is fine, but here is the problem. Remember that the props we are passing to memo example is show pricing cards and show heading. So if this value changes, it makes sense that this component needs to be re-rendered with the new value. If this value changes, it makes sense that this component should be re-rendered with that new value. But then if this show use effect components value changes, it has no business with the memo example component. So in this case, one way we can improve the performance of our application is that this memo example component should only be re-rendered when this value changes and this value changes. If every other value changes, 
changes, this shouldn't need to be re-rendered. And this is where we can introduce the memo function. But just to show you a quick example, let's say when you click on update states, it doesn't update show pricing card state and it doesn't update show heading state. So when the update state function is called, the only thing it does is to call set show use effect comp. So this is the only state it's affecting. Now let's say I refresh, memo example component is rendered, you have rendered show, show heading true, show pricing cards true. If I click on update state now, the show use effect comp state now has false, but you can see that memo example is re-rendered again. So we have rendered show heading true, show pricing cards true. So as you can see here, show heading true and show pricing cards true remained the same even from the previous render. So we can avoid this component from being re-rendered again. Remember I said that we are assuming this component does a lot of computation. So in this case, you might want to avoid always repeating that computation. If it's a very simple component, then it doesn't matter if it is re-rendered all the time, even if it doesn't need to be. But if it is a component that does a lot of expensive stuff, then you want to improve performance by re-rendering that component only when you need to re-render the component. So how can we improve this with the memo function? Well, first we can import memo from React. Then now we are going to change this a bit. I'm going to remove this export default for now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say const, then I can say memoized memo example equal, then I can use the memo function. So this memo function receives your component. So I can copy everything from this point here to the end here, and I can paste it in here. So you have the memo function and then you pass your component here. And of course, that means we're going to have memoized memo example for our prop types. So memoized memo example for our prop types. And then we have this. And then we can now say export default memoized memo example. And this way, we have been able to tell React that memoize this component and only re-render this component if the props changes. That means if show heading or the show pricing cards props changes. Now, this memo function does not modify your component in any way. All it does is that it would return a memoized version of your component, which can receive props and which you can also set your prop types on. By the way, instead of having your memo function and then having all of this in between the parentheses, another thing you can do is I'm going to copy that. So here you can have your function memo example just like this. And here we can do memo example dot prop types like this. Then for this line, we can bring it down to say const memoized memo example. And then we have memo and then we can pass the memo example component here. So doing it like this is much easier to read. You have your memo and you pass the components here. But for the rest of this lesson, I'm just going to continue with what I have already been showing you so far. Now let's go back to app.gsx. We're still importing memo example example from here or you can choose to call it memoized memo example so here i am in my console first the memo example component is rendered so we have rendered show heading true show pricing cards true now when i click on this update state this is going to update the show use effect comp and it's going to change the state from true to false and when it changes it to false it means that this component here would not be rendered so currently this component is rendered at the bottom here now if i click on update states you can see that component is not rendered at the bottom anymore because show use effect comp is now false but one thing you notice now is that that memo example is not re-rendered and that is why we do not have another log here. Memo example only cares about these two props, show pricing cards and show heading. So as long as the value for these props stays the same, our component will be memoized. The only time the component will be re-rendered is if these values change. So now if I should come back here and uncomment this part, let me just uncomment show pricing cards. Now I refresh. If I come here, you can see that this is still showing because show use effect comp is true. Now if I I click on update states here we now have show pricing cards becoming false and we have show use effect comp becoming 
false and because show pricing cards changed and show pricing cards is a value that this component depends on because of the show pricing cards prop they can see that our memo example is now rendered again so we have rendered show heading true show heading did not change but show pricing cards changed from true to false and because it changed then react knows that this component needs to be re-rendered so like i said earlier the memo function allows you to create a memo memoized version of your component which would be rendered the first time but will only be re-rendered if the props passed to that component changes. If the props passed to that component doesn't change then that component will not be re-rendered and this way depending on your use case or depending on how large your components are or the expensive operations that the component is doing this way you can avoid always repeating those operations and only running those operations when the component props changes because if the component props doesn't change then it doesn't make sense to keep running the same thing if you keep running the same thing you would always keep getting the same result right so since you keep getting the same result then there's no need to run the same thing unless the props of that component changes but one thing to know is that the memo function has no business with the state of a component if the state of that component changes the component would be re-rendered and this is why i have this change color example so if i refresh for the first time we have this rendered that this is logged here now we have this color state if i click on this button which changes the color state you can see we have another rendered if i click on this button again we have another rendered even if the props have not actually changed the props are still show heading true show pricing cards true even if the props has not changed the memo function does not care about the state so if your state changes you can see we have four renders now the first render and three more renders i update the color state we have even more renders so the memo function has no business with the state the memo function only cares about the props that the component is receiving so i hope with this example you can see how the memo function allows you to only re-render a component when the props has changed if the props has not changed then you keep using the memoized version of that component